It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves. While the media in the United Snakes has been focused on the cage match between Hill Dog and the Donald, peeps in Colombia paralyzed the whole fucking country with over 100 highway blockades of critical transportation corridors. This was achieved by a broad-based coalition of indigenous groups, Afro-Colombians, farmers, truck drivers, teachers, students, and precarious workers. So, to learn more about just what the fuck's going down in Colombia, I recently caught up with Marcela of Las Organizaciones Sociales de Arauca, or the Social Organizations of Arauca. Hey, Marcela, how the fuck are you? There is a lot of violence against the people, so we are not doing well. On May 30th, peeps in Colombia staged a Paro Nacional, or a nationwide blockage, somewhat akin to a general strike. What led people to take this action? Well, principally, it's the economic model. The people are tired of the same economic policies that the government has been implementing for decades. These are the same policies that generated the armed conflict in the country, but they have also generated social issues that the people can no longer continue to tolerate. So this is what has provoked this national agrarian, peasant, ethnic, and popular strike. How was this battle organized and what has the state's response been? Well, the social movements are connected to a platform called the Agrarian Summit, which includes participation from peasant, indigenous, and Afro-descendant organizations. And there has also been dialogue with other members of social sectors, such as the truck drivers, transporters, labor unions, and other trade unions. The people have been protesting for a few years now, and the government has made promises that it has not fulfilled. This new strike is demanding the fulfillment of these prior agreements, and the response from the government is, on one hand, to try and draw out this dialogue, prolong these negotiations, and on the other, to repress, to repress the people who are mobilizing on the highways and in the lands of Colombia. One of the issues that organizers of the Paro Nacional have raised is the National Development Plan, being proposed by Colombia's president, Juan Manuel Santos. What does his plan entail and why are people so opposed to it? The National Development Plan is a deepening of the economic policies of the government. Among other things, it allows the land to be concentrated more than it already is into the property of businessmen, cattle breeders, and owners of agro-business. It privileges mining, mineral extraction, and hydrocarbon extraction above protecting the environment above maintaining environmental equilibrium. So basically, it prioritizes extraction at the cost of the resources and wealth that the Colombian people produce and which exist in Colombian territory. And this obviously negatively affects the quality of life of the population. So this is why the people are against the National Development Plan. Back in 1998, Billy Clint launched Plan Colombia, a bilateral agreement framed as an effort to help Colombia fight so-called war on drugs. This arrangement has continued under both the Bush and Obama administrations and has since served as a model for the current war on drugs in Mexico. What material effects has Plan Colombia had on social movements in your country? Consequences have been more poverty and more militarization. Really, drugs were just an excuse, because here the drug problem has not been resolved. What was gained through Plan Colombia was a massive increase to the budget and resources required to finance the war, to finance the state security forces, to militarize the territories, the cities, the countryside. And so a consequence is that today people's lives are more heavily controlled. Now the private sphere has been militarized, the schools have been militarized, civil life in general has been militarized. That is the consequence of Plan Colombia. And the phenomenon of narco-trafficking and the production of crops with illegal uses continues basically the same. It's a precursor to the current peace process. In 2003, the government of Álvaro Uribe began negotiations aimed at demobilizing right-wing paramilitary death squads such as the Autodefensas Unidas de Colombia or AUC. This process was supposed to have finished in 2006. Did these groups actually demobilize? And what happened to members of these groups? Es que realmente no son ellos. Well, really, it is not them. Paramilitarism is not a group of people. Paramilitarism is a strategy or mechanism of extrajudicial violence, of dirty war. Paramilitarism was implemented by the Colombian government, by private armed groups, but also by members of the state security forces, the police, army, security organisms, DAS, to be able to carry out undercover operations. 
That is what paramilitarism is. It's a mechanism that claims to be a third actor, external to the government, that carries out grave crimes such as tortures, disappearances, massacres, etc. It is logical that if there are private individuals who participated in these structures, they could have been demobilized in a dialogue with President Uribe. Some of these people were, but others continue carrying out this role, so knowing that, what had to be eliminated was not the individuals involved, but precisely the mechanism of illegal violence that has been implemented by the Colombian state since the 70s, when paramilitarism began. And this has not been resolved. Paramilitarism continues to exist, and those in power continue to use it. There is the clear case of the disappearances of activists demanding land restitution for displaced people. Despite the fact that these paramilitary groups no longer officially exist, these people continue to be assassinated, and they continue to be assassinated for the same reasons.